This is not an unboxing because I am explicitly not allowed to unbox the Xbox Series X, but Microsoft never said anything about unveiling. Hey, wait. I appear to have been trolled. This is a PC. And yes, there are still some differences. So we're gonna talk about that in a moment. That's what you guys were looking at back there. <laughs> They're like gathered around the door before I start filming. Well, you know what? I'm gonna hold on to this though, because this is about the closest equivalent in terms of form factor to an Xbox Series X. So having it here as a reference is pretty good. It's really small. I don't know why, but I was expecting this to be bigger. That's what she said. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to get your website up and running quickly. They have award-winning templates that act as a starting point for a wide range of projects. Their e-commerce features help you sell merch or services online and easily manage your inventory and orders. If you need support, Squarespace offers webinars as well as 24-7 support via live chat and email. And you can check them out at squarespace.com slash short circuit to get a 10% discount. Yeah, I don't know why, but just based on the images, I was really expect like it's impressively small. The Corsair One is already very small for such a powerful gaming rig. Uh, but you can see it's probably like a good, it's good like 30% bigger anyway. Oh, it's way more bigger than that actually, now that I'm looking at it from this angle. This is a working Xbox Series X and is the one that we're gonna be using for our preview content. As for the full review, I think it's up in the air as to whether this gets a software update or they send new final hardware, but this is, this is basically the full experience. So on the front, we've got our Blu-ray disc drive slot. On the other side, we've got, wow, that's a really mushy button. I wonder why. Uh, so wireless pairing button. Maybe it's like really durable because they know people are gonna press it a lot compared to the eject button for the optical drive. Ha <laughs> ha, got him. We've got a USB type A port over on the left hand side. There's a whole lot of nada. Over on the right hand side, this is a really cool approach to the cooling solution. In the past, we've seen consoles that can be configured either vertically or lying down, but one of the caveats of running them that way has been that it can restrict airflow. But with the Series X, it actually looks like, if anything, it might be in slightly better shape if you run it in the horizontal configuration compared to the vertical one. The fan in the top or side, depending on how you put it in your media center, is a bit of an unusual configuration. So it's exhausting, but we can actually see the front of the hub instead of the back of the hub. So they've actually swept the blades the other way. So this is our exhaust fan and then the intakes. So they're at the back by the IO and then also on what would be the bottom if the unit is standing up. Does this really not, it has to. Really? Does this not come off? Like, why would you want a big thing like that? These are the kinds of things that kind of drive me a little bit crazy. Like if I'm an Xbox enthusiast, I don't want a big circle rubberized stand thing on the side of my console where I might conceivably see it. Kids can't lose it. Kids can't lose it. Okay, that's fair. You can't lose the stand that way. Something that they could have done better as well as this Xbox logo. Like why not just make it rotatable? I have seen that before on PC cases that can be configured in either a standing or lying down. Tactile feel of the power button is really good though. You can really hear that sound. I like it. Compared to the size of the PS5, at least from, you know, it's hard to get a real feel for it until you see it in person, but compared to what I think the size of the PS5 is gonna be, this is way more palatable and What's really cool is that while Sony went and built like a, a, a technology art piece that I guess is supposed to be kind of the centerpiece of your living room based on the look of it, Microsoft built something that's actually going to fit in my media console. You know, whether I have a more traditional one that's designed for like AV rack style equipment or whether I have a more, you know, modern one that's got smaller shelves or whatever, like you would be able to find a spot for this. Now with all that said, one thing that I think is a really poorly addressed pain point for console gamers is cooling for consoles that are installed and hidden away within their media consoles. Like, does that exist? 
like a media cabinet that goes under your TV that has like proper freaking cooling in it? That is so stupid. We should develop it. Yeah, lttstore.com, like media console with just, and it wouldn't even take much. It would just need like 120 volt to 12 volt freaking adapter, some fans and wire management and some holes in it. Okay, if nothing else, I promise you this now. We are going to design one and we're gonna upload the plan so you can make your own. There. Before we fire it up though, let's have a quick look at the back where we've got two more USB type A's. So there was one on the front. Also back here, gigabit ethernet, storage expansion. Uh, I think Lou has gotten his hands on one of those from Seagate already, but we have it too. do we have one? Really? Throw it at the Xbox? <laughs> I like that. All together, it's the uh, Xbox Series Extra Small. <laughs> We're not compensating for anything here at Microsoft. So this is it, this is my... Wait, does this count as an unboxing? It's not a box. There was no box. Uh... Huh, it's got some heft to it. I'd love to disassemble it. I really want to disassemble it. Now, I'm sure this is not the case. When Red Digital Cinema made a bunch of noise about, or, you know, red mags, or super durable, you know, memory cards, uh, it turned out that it was just an MSATA SSD and a proprietary controller with some firmware tweaks to make sure that you couldn't swap it out for a different one. This, I suspect, is a little bit more purpose engineered. So if you want another one terabyte of expansion, you just go ahead and pop that puppy in there. Whoops, this way. Nope, this way. But what's really cool is that if you're playing previous generation Xbox games, or even if you have a game that you don't wanna play immediately, but you don't wanna re-download, you can just plug in USB storage and use that instead. So this is only if you have games in your library that you absolutely wanna play and take advantage of the high-speed internal storage of the Xbox series. Pricing for this guy is 219 US. You know what I really like about this though actually is compared to the just extortionist pricing of memory expansion for things like the PS1 and PS2. Like you think back to those days, how much you were being charged for what, like eight megabytes of, you know, save game storage. And the fact that you absolutely needed it in order to save your games. Like, yeah, it's optional, except you can't save your progress unless you have one, right? This is truly optional. And the pricing's not ridiculous. Like a Samsung 980 Pro on uh, amazon.com. Hold on, let me just uh, pull this up and double check. I think it's around, yeah, 230 bucks for a one terabyte model. Like this is right in line with a high performance add-in PC SSD. Now it's just a matter of time until just like a Surface laptop or any other computer, you've got your, your storage bay and your extra RAM bay. What would they call that? They could, maybe we could get DIM, DIM expansions for it? No? Okay, the it's just a PC jokes are getting old? Okay, fine. Um, absent from the Xbox series is of course the HDMI in. So gone is the whole concept of this is your media hub that your cable box plugs through. I think they absolutely still want it to be a media hub. They just <laughs> have gotten with the times. Nobody cares about cable. As for whether I'd use this to just put all my games on and carry to a friend's house, I don't know. Seeing it in person, I like the look of it a lot. Same. Yeah, it, really good. It's, it looked kind of like, in the, in the marketing materials and the renders and stuff, it looked boxy, but in person it looks like, I don't know, like, powerful. Monolithic? Yeah, sure. But it's too small, no, it's too small to be monolithic. I don't know if I can get behind that, but it's like. It's mini -lithic. Yeah, mini lithic. That's good, is that, is that a thing? Probably Did you just make that up? I just made that up. Oh, I love it. Are we allowed to show that sound? Now you can tune a PC to be this quiet at idle, but it's like, you gotta go in the BIOS and configure your fan curves and blah, 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 blah. Right out of the box? The Xbox, you might say. Fine, James, we will talk about the sound and how it's not a new sound because it doesn't matter. I think that's the whole point of this product lineup and why the name is like stupid and confusing and hard to say. I think Microsoft's entire point is that which particular Xbox, it's just, it's an X box, like, yeah, it doesn't matter. You're, you're just, you're gaming on Xbox and you're running at whatever, like this is the, this is the 4K one, the other one's that, ah, it's a 1440p one. You got a last gen one, that's a 1080p Xbox. Uh, it's all about the games as a service now. It's all about Game Pass. 
uh, cross-platform. Like Xbox is just a cheap, gaming box to get people into the ecosystem where, where as far as Microsoft cares, this can be the be all and end all of your gaming experience. It can be a gateway drug into PC gaming. As long as you are subscribed, they ultimately own the ecosystem now. Anyway, that's as far as I wanna push my luck today uh, in terms of turning it on. So make sure you're subscribed over on Linus Tech Tips where we're gonna have a preview with gameplay impressions, full review, image quality comparisons, all that kind of stuff. We're gonna have some fun with this one.